Hi, my name is Jeff Garner. Welcome to what I'm calling Ultrasonic Testing Demystified. In each episode, I'm going to look at a different area of ultrasonics, whether that be conventional angle beam inspection, phased array testing, uh, time of flight diffraction, or examinations for high temperature hydrogen attack. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with slag. We'll start with the uh, volumetric flaws and then proceed on to planar flaws. Now, ultrasonics uh, is weakest in detecting volumetric flaws. They're just not great reflectors. And in later videos, we'll get into why. But that's all reflected in the A-scan signal that you get. All right, so let's get the signal on here. Okay, so we wanna go Pour it away from the uh, weld and see what happens. All right, we can see that's not got a lot of height to it. We want to skew the probe, which is twisting at an angle like this. That will reveal any kind of roughness or tell you how rough or smooth the, the signal is. It'll also tell you the, the kind of help you with the orientation of the flaw. Okay, so yeah, you can see it's pretty much right along the length of the weld. All right, it's not a real smooth reflector because when we skew it, that signal kind of stays on there quite a bit. See how much the probe is skewed right now? We still have a signal on the screen. All right, let's look at it from the other side. All right, looks like it's higher in amplitude from this side. One thing I want you to notice is that little signal that's kind of tacked onto the back of the signal there. You have one big signal followed by a little tip poking up there. All right, that is typical of a rounded indication, such as a side drilled hole from a calibration block. All right. So let me show you. There we go. So there is a side drilled hole on a calibration block. You see the main reflection followed by that little uh, trailing echo. Some people call that a satellite pulse, some just call it wrap around, but that's where the sound just kind of wraps around that, that uh, circle, the hole, and then comes back. So it's at a very low amplitude. All right, so the reflector that's most like a side drilled hole would be slag. Right, it's a little rough. Another thing is the amplitude. Right now I'm at uh, 12 dB above reference. If I go to reference, look how low that signal is. You can barely get it up to 28% full screen height. Another indicator that it's a rounded reflector. So now we'll look at that on an S scan. Okay, let's go back to plus 12. All right, you can see, let's look at that calibration block again. All right, and you see how you can see the uh, main reflection and that trailing echo behind there? That's, that's how it looks on an S scan phased array. Remember, everything that applies to conventional applies to phased array. All the phased array images are built off of your A scan. All right, so we'll go back to the flaw. Not really getting that satellite pulse that we talked about from this side much, but you can see that it's not just a real clean signal. All right, there you can see it, that satellite pulse. Huge indicator of slag. Okay, now we're going to move on to porosity. Now, porosity is the most difficult flaw for ultrasonics to detect because it's not a single homogeneous reflector. It's a cluster of small reflectors. All right, you have 
varying size little uh, pores and they don't reflect sound well that they they scatter it more than they return it most of the time and that'll be reflected in the a scan signal all right slag is the most difficult to detect but the easiest to characterize okay so if you see the signal that's on the screen now you can see it's not a single reflector but a bunch of small little reflect uh, signals grouped together really wide really hashy very low in amplitude this is at plus 12 db so that means it's four times uh, more gain than the reference level there's a reference see how it barely shows up let's go to the other side all right very low in amplitude let's put it back up to plus 12 now watch what happens when I skew the probe how, how how much I can skew it and still see the signal there see it's still on the screen and look how much that you can't really see that let's go to the other side still have the signal look how far that probe is skewed go back the other way and that is porosity okay we've got a different uh, block here we're going to talk about the best reflector easiest to detect that would be lack of sidewall fusion All right, why is it easy to detect because it's a specular reflector it's like a which means it's like a mirror uh, it's nice smooth a good homogeneous reflector All right, so right there we've got a huge signal we're again we're at uh, plus 12 dB so let's uh, let's get our gate on our signal all right we're at plus 12 dB huge reflector okay remember what I said we we don't want our gain to be too high all right so that's the first indicator that this is lack of fusion is huge amplitude. All right, let's just go down to reference and see where we're at. Okay, at reference, we are pretty high here and get it over 70%. All right, so let's see what happens when we uh, skew the probe and look at the signal. All right since this is like a mirror and it's smooth as soon as i start to skew the probe that signal should just drop straight down there, there's no nothing else on that flaw to keep the signal to reflect all right look how how little i'm i don't know if you can see that well but i'm barely skewing that probe and it just drops right off all right the this bevel on here is 37.5, so about a 53 degrees angle, somewhere in that neighborhood, should give us the best reflection because that's that's going to be about perpendicular. So if we look at the S scan signal, let's add 60. Wait kind of go toward in a way and see where we get the best reflector okay somewhere in that neighborhood if you see that's our 52 degree All right so right there is the best angle to reflect off of this fusion that's right on the sidewall that lack of sidewall fusion what else tells me it's fusion All right if I go to the other side I should not see that back and forth not seeing it so that's lack of sidewall fusion 
All right, now we're going to take a look at an ID crack, a root crack. Okay, so let's switch over to an A scan. We're running at plus 6 dB right now. Alright, we'll just, what I do is stick the probe up against the weld cap, toe of the weld, run it along the weld, and bam, there, there comes our crack. Okay, you can see right there, it's not a smooth reflector. See all the uh, different facets to the signal. And I can skew it quite a bit and it stays on there. Rough looking signal. That's typical of a root crack. And we put it down at uh, reference. Still good uh, amplitude. look at the other side so that signal you see there past the, uh, the white dash line that's that white dash line represents the ID surface so that signal right there is from the root of the weld so you run along the uh, toe of the weld you can tell that's geometry and then at some point Should pop up. Let's go plus six again. Yeah, you can see it right there. So reason that's coming up right there is because of the angle that's on, on right now. Let's change that angle a bit. Alright. There we go. Now it's coming up in front of the ID. Very wide, a lot of facets. A crack has a very rough surface, so it can reflect a lot more sound as you're skewing it than what lack of fusion does. It's another way to tell the difference between cracks and lack of fusion. So that is a root crack. Okay, let's look at that same reflector with phased array. This is where the beauty of phased array comes in. So I'll put the probe up against the toe. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to go along the toe, and there, there it is. Move our angle, there's our signal, going right up the uh, inside of the root there, on the bevel. Alright, you can see that the crack is on the probe side over here. If I turn this around, it should show up on the other side of the root. There it is. See all the different little reflections from the different facets of the crack? Okay, we talked about root cracks. Let's talk about uh, OD cracks or what we call toe cracks. All right. The uh, signal characteristics are going to be the same as a root crack. It's just going to plot out on the OD as opposed to the ID. So let's get back to our A scan. 
same type of signal it's it's really rough this is a really kind of gnarly looking crack right here very rough surface to it all right you can skew it a lot signal stays there it's got some height to it that's toe crack very difficult to confuse that with anything else so let's look at that on our uh, sector scan with phased array and no doubt about what that is right there okay this is that reference Okay, moving on to our last flaw type we're going to look at. It's going to be lack of root penetration. Okay, we're scanning at plus 12 dB. So we'll scan along here until we find it. There we go. Get a scan on there. So you can see it comes in very strong. So let's reduce that down to reference. All right, this this can be difficult to uh, discriminate between this and uh, root cracks, which really doesn't matter because they're both planar flaws, both in the root. They're both subject to the same acceptance criteria. So there's no test out there I know of that's going to ding you if you call a crack a lack of fusion or vice versa or lack of penetration. But usually lack of pet root penetration has a wide base to the A scan signal. It's definitely not a smooth reflector. You can skew it a bit. And it stays on there, high in amplitude. Let's look at it from the other side. Again, may not be the ideal angle I'm looking at. So let's look at our phased array. Okay, there's our signal. Let's go back to the A scan. Okay, there it is. Okay, we're still booming off the screen at reference. You can see it's got a wide base. There aren't as many facets as there are on the crack, although cracks can really vary. Some really tight cracks can display a lot different signals and then uh, uh, kind of a wide like fatigue or thermal fatigue type crack but this is obviously just above the I just above the ID okay we got it from both sides apples to apples all right let's get our sector scan up here to show you the phased array so we'll scan along all right, that's on the probe side there of the weld. See that signal? Go to the other side, and there it is again. So that's incomplete or lack of penetration. As we've just seen, different types of flaws produce different characteristics in our A-scan signal. This has been a very short introduction to flaw signal characteristics. Keep in mind that all these things I talk about are general rules that hold true most of the time, but there are always exceptions. In subsequent videos, I'll be going into more depth on what about those different flaws affect our signals in different ways. Until next time.